Hey, good morning, everybody, or uh, whatever time it might be for you when you're watching this. It's uh, morning here right now while I'm recording. So recently I had a video or a request uh, to do a couple videos on apex loop structures, uh, which are a fundamental part of programming. And if you are aspiring to become a developer, um, you are just you're uh, trying to study for that PD1 certification, I can promise you are going to see several questions about while loops. So I decided I wanted to try to make these videos a little shorter. So consider there are really five types of loops in Apex. I decided to break this into two videos. Uh, video one, we are going to do while and do while loops. Um, frankly, you're going to use these much, much less in your day to day work but it's important to understand them. Uh, they're parts of just about every programming language. So you need to understand how while and do while loops work, even if you don't use them very often. So that said, let's, uh, let's start writing the code. All right, so I'm gonna uh, open up my IDE. And uh, again, if you're not familiar, I am using Illuminated Cloud. Use uh, Visual Studio Code or whatever uh, you like to work with. I'm a big fan of this one. We're going to create a new Apex class. We're just going to call it Loop Structures. And if you are coding along with me, don't. What something I want you to not worry too much about right now is I'm going to say some of the kind of like the boilerplate syntax that goes into Apex class and method declarations. Your public with sharing. Uh, this is stuff you just got to type uh, very shortly. It'll become muscle memory and you'll start to understand when should it be public, when should it be private, etc. So let's make our first method. We're going to make it a uh, public static void because we're not going to return anything from this method. And uh, we're going to name our method the while loop, parentheses, curly braces, standards, syntax for every loop, for every method that we're ever going to write. All right, we're going to give it a parameter, integer. So remember, if you forgot, parameters are just uh, like local variables uh, that only exist within the context of the method. Because Apex is a statically typed language, we have to say what sort of data that variable is going to hold. And in this case, it's going to hold an integer. And we're going to name it times to run. All right, now let's do for, our, for the first thing we need to do with any sort of a while loop is we need to give it an index, a counter, so we don't create an infinite loop. And I'll show you what would happen if we do that. So um, we're going to say create another integer. We're going to name it index. And we're going to set it to a value of zero. All right. And then we are going to add our while loop. We're going to while. And we have to say while a certain condition is true. So we're going to say while index is less than our times to run parameter. Curly braces, because inside that we are going to say then execute this code while that condition is true. And we are just going to print to our debug log, because that's always a good quick example for this sort of thing. Hello. From the while loop. And we will print out the value of our index. Now, if I ran this right now, and I'm not going to, because we will just sit here for about 20 seconds and look at um, my screen locking up. This will be an endless loop. It is never going to stop running um, because we are not increasing the value of our index. Right? Unless I passed in you know, a negative number, but if I passed in told it to run five times, index never increases. So the condition in your while loop here is always going to be true. So eventually we will just, Apex will kick us out, uh, governor limits will kick in and uh, our code will fail. So the last step in a while loop is we have to increment our counter, our index. Normal developer convention for that is index I, whatever you're using, plus plus. Now, if I run this, and we're going to open up our uh, handy-dandy anonymous Apex window, give us a little more space. And, you know, before I do that, I need to compile my code. Do a second for that to run. As it deploys. Okay, now, so let's uh, loop structures. So we access our class. We use dot notation to access the methods and properties within our class. 
loop structures, while loop. We gave it a parameter. We're going to give it a five, right? So we are going to, and let's run it. See what we get back. And let's just uh, show debug information only. So there you go. We can see that successfully executed that code five times from the while loop. And this is, I mean, that's why we use loops, right? So loops are a way to execute a, a piece of code a certain number of times. Otherwise, I mean, if I want to do, if I wanted to execute this five times, otherwise, right, I would have to do something like, you know, just add the, the code in five times. Horrible practice, right? Now that's five more lines of code I have to maintain, I have to update. Uh, completely inflexible. What happens if the business requirements change? You need to run it six times or three times. So loops are what give us that flexibility. Let's get rid of that garbage out of there. So that is a while loop. I really, you will not use while loops very often in uh, in Apex programming. I really tend to think of them only as if uh, if you read my uh, our earlier blog post on recursion. Uh, typically maybe use them as the base condition for a recursive method, but because Apex is not a language that supports recursion very well, a uh, very low stack depth limit, you're not going to implement recursive methods very often. So let's, uh, next up, let's do our, get into our do while loop. So same thing, public static void, do while loop. And let's uh, we'll do the same thing. Let's give it a let's give it a parameter. We don't have to. We don't have to give any of these things uh, parameters. I'm just doing it for. We could just hard code the value of the index in there, set it to some you know. But uh, for for the sake of this, we are going to assign parameters. Um, all right. So same thing, just like we did in the while loop. What we really need to start off with first is to create some sort of a counter, some sort of index. Um, so we don't have an endless loop. I'm going to set it equal, you know, for this, I'm going to start off, I'm going to set this one equal to one, just for the example here. Now, instead of, before we type do, we're going to start with, whoop, I'm calling my method, which is not what I want, do. So, in the code inside the do condition is always going to run at least one time. So we're going to get some quotation marks there. Hello. In the do condition. And again, we're going to print out the value of our index. And you know what? For this one, I think just to make the point we will also print out the value of our parameter time to run okay that'll work now just like before we need to increment our our index, our counter variable, plus plus. So this is, the code in the do condition is always going to run because it's going to be evaluated first. Then we have to give it a, so then we create the while. So while this is true, then loop back through again. So we're going to use the exact same logic we did before. While index less than times to run. My ID gave me an extra pair of curly braces here that I don't really need. All right, so this is the fundamental difference, and you will probably see this on a PD-1 exam. If you want to create a loop where you know the code is always going to run one time, no matter what, you would use a do-while loop because it's not going to evaluate this condition until after this runs. So... Okay, let's compile that and uh, we'll open up our uh, anonymous Apex. Something else I hope maybe you learn from these is how very useful the anonymous Apex window can be. It took me a little while to kind of get a hang of that when I was learning to, de to develop in Salesforce. All right, let's get rid of that one. 
loop structures, call our class. Now you can see my we have two methods that I can access. We're going to go to our do while loop. If you remember up here, this one, for the example, I set the uh, index condition to one. And I'm going to give it a value of zero. So I am starting. I'm calling it with a value less than the index. So the condition is one, parameter is zero, but because we uh, put it in the do condition, it's going to run no matter what, right? So that's the difference. Now let's say if we change that to five, call it again. Now you could see it's incrementing through, but no matter what, even if we set a condition to lower than index, that code in the do loop is going to run one time. So there you have it. That is a while loop and a do while loop implemented in Apex. Uh, hope this was useful to you. If it was, uh, please uh, hit like and subscribe. Let me know what you might like to see next. Have a great one, everybody, and uh, keep on working to get better.